For my discipleship project, I chose to write two to three things that I was grateful for that day, every day, for one month. This caused me to be constantly on the lookout for God's blessings in the world. Even though we cannot be in a place of worship right now, God still appears in our daily lives. Before places of worship were created, he was still in our lives and always will be. Being in quarantine definitely affected my project. Because I had to stay home while I was doing it, I was forced to pay attention to the smaller things in life. Whether it be reconnecting with an old friend, the food I was eating, or the tree outside my window, God's blessings showed up all over the place. I think that this is especially important to remember in times like this when it seems like God is not present, and this project definitely helped, helped me realize this. Hi, my name is Blair, and today I am going to be talking about my Disciple Project. My Disciple Project took place from April 1st to May 1st of this year. For my project, I decided to combine my enjoyment of violin with my faith to God. For one month, I played four different hymns on my violin, and after I finished playing, I took a moment of silence to pray and reflect on how I felt and connected with God. The hymns I chose to play were All the Praise to God for Song God Gives, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, Come Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove, and Christ the Lord is Risen Again. So why was this project important to me? The first reason is gratification. As I mentioned before, I wanted my Disciple Project to surround around something I value and truly enjoy. Playing uplifted my mood and gave me time to think about my relationship with the church. I learned that no matter what I am doing or where I am, God is my stalwart mentor and will be my confidant to rely on. The next reason is connection. I found that when I used my passion for violin, it allowed me to connect with my faith towards God. So how did it connect to God? As I was moving through the days with my project, I found that doing this created a sense of trust and calamity when I was practicing. Analyzing and valuing the word of God in each hymn alleviated any anxiety I had that day or allowed me to face it. In addition, I realized my communication with God became exceedingly more clear than it had before. It was peculiar, but on several occasions, whether I was feeling stressed, somber, exasperated, or fatigued, specific words in the hymns seemed to sit the f situation that day. This brings me to the three hymns the three days that seemed were most accentuated when I look back on this project. The first day was the 6th of April. On this day, I was feeling incredibly stressed with schoolwork and learning how to maintain a schedule, and the hymn read, The word gives both the life and light and guides through shades of night. It lifted my spirits and cleansed my mind. It was as if God was trying to speak to me through the hymn and letting me know he had a plan for me. The next day of my project that stood out was day 15. I was so surprised at how the words of the hymn gave me hope during this time of havoc. They read, Behold what wondrous deeds of peace God does for our salvation. The last day was the 28th of April. This day stood out to me because I was realizing how near to the end of my project it was getting and how much I would miss it. At that point, for almost a month, this practice was connecting me to a version of myself that made me so much happier and focused on living in the moment. Overall, what did the project teach me? After reflecting on my hymns and how I was connecting with God, I found myself thinking pensively about how I wanted to better myself, resulting in my being more thoughtful before acting. The next thing it strengthened for me was my motivation. For so long, this quarantine had gotten me down and unmotivated, not wanting to do my school or for exercise. It uplifted any apprehensiveness that hindered me from, getting for, from further getting any work done and gave me support of God to be even more proficient. The last thing it taught me was creativity. Playing the same hymn for up to 11 days may seem tedious to those who have not done it, but for me it was an opportunity. I could play the songs at different tempos, use different techniques in different areas, such as applying more of a slow and sad mood, or playing it at a faster tempo with more vibrato. Doing this actually seemed to paint a mental picture of what I was feeling that day. Possibly, if I was feeling anxious and didn't realize it, I would play it in a rushed and unorganized way. Playing the hymn was almost a reminder that I needed to stop and take a breath which was pretty inconceivable to me. And lastly, how do I feel about confirmation? I think this project has formed me to be even more ready to be a part of this church than I was before. On some days, I felt myself getting distant to God and only really connecting with him during church or when I played with my family. I learned how to let go of issues that are in God's hands, how to grow my faith independently and what Christianity meant to me. It means trusting God, respecting my surroundings, being consistent with my faith, and so much more.
taking this moment to face what I was feeling, just me and God, was a pivotal moment for me because I realized our relationship was growing. I was able to tell him what he was, what was causing me pain, how I wanted forgiveness or ask for advice. What was really special to me was how my star word given to me in church this year, growing, was coming into effect. The memories I created with this project resonate with me as I think about who I am and who I want to be. It has taught me qualities I didn't know I had, bolstered my relationship with Christ, and made me even more exuberant to take this next step with the church. Hi everyone, uh, this is my Disciple Project slideshow, however, since of uh, all the recent events that ha have happened, I'm now converting it into video format. Uh, throughout the presentation, if you wish to view the pictures that are in the slides, you may pause it anytime, I will make it as interactive as possible, while also not having an audience, but without further ado, Let's start, okay? Practicing emotional intelligence, a journey of mindfulness and faith. Next slide. All right, so for the first week, I wanted to lay down some goals that I wanted to do throughout this project. So each week I tried to get, get a uh, common felt emotion and those could be two different emotions I could have one in the journal entry, and I could have one displayed in the picture. As long as I was recording it, I was doing the right thing. And if you are confused, I'm sure it will start to clear up in the next three to four slides. Yeah, next four slides, it will start to it start to clear up. All right, so let's start with the journal entry. I'm going to recite it. I fear that I may appear to be boring and mean-spirited while talking. This week, I'll rid of my inarticulate, inarticulateness, -ness, sorry, I can't speak today. My voice is rather scratchy. By slowing down my delivery, the current class more friendly. So with these journal entries, I'm attempting to try and summarize how I felt throughout the week or what my goals were for the week. So as this presentation progresses, you'll see different goals that the week hopefully and then the synopsis of the picture i drew which was supposed to capture what the journal journal entry was but i went for a different direction while the picture doesn't correspond with the week's goal i attempted to focus my attention on not distracting myself from the pandemic 
but approaching it and beating it metaphorically. Of course, I did not get coronavirus. I have not felt sick. So, of course, this is a metaphor. Next slide. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on week two, and it came so quickly. This week's journal entry, I think it was trying to achieve meeting quotas every week since I felt kind of uh, drowsy some days. I felt kind of hangry some days. So I finally said enough is enough. I need to set quotas for myself. I need to set limits. And so first journal entry, not the first one, but the one that summarized my week the best. Oh boy, I found it. So you know how I've been performing bad lately? Well, see, there's this thing called quotas I gotta maintain. Food, conversation, and stimulation are all things that gotta be watched from now on. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so is the picture too. The picture directly corresponds with the journal entry. So, yeah. All right, so next slide. So on week three, while journaling my summative journal entry, I found that I didn't put anything there. So it was a blank page. And I was already up at like 11 a.m. And I mean 11 p.m., sorry. Uh, which is relatively late for me, considering I like to go to bed at 9 to 10. But that's besides the point. Staying up watching whatever, you know, like animal documentaries and stuff, but then I found this kind of inspirational channel. And it was there that I found that there's a spectrum of arrogance. And I'm gonna I'm gonna elaborate in the journal entry. Okay, hear me out. I heard something that there's a spectrum of arrogance. On the less arrogant side of the spectrum, there's a self there is self self indulgence, sorry. Where someone is so caught up on how other people perceive them that they can be considered slightly arrogant. I'll stray away from that. People hate self-indulgence. I do too, honestly. And I, I wasn't lying when I hate it when people complain constantly about themselves too. So I figured if I hate other people doing that, then why am I doing that? I think it's only fair that I work on myself before I start uh, judging other people though. And the brief synopsis of the uh, picture, I actually like this picture the most or this drawing rather sorry uh out of all four of them let me elaborate as briefly as i can without giving too much away a person not shown is using a tube to take water from a pond that he's used to make mud the person with the pond is making items from the mud and so the less fortunate can have some resources that's all for week three and if we're almost at week four, so here we go. Next slide. In week four, I was really all in. I was connecting with my friends a lot better. I enjoyed my friends' company. I was able to, I, I was just able to enjoy their presence to a better degree now that I've used all my tools that I've learned when journaling and also focusing on emotional intelligence. So, without further ado, I'm gonna read the journal entry. While this may be my last entry, it is far from the last time doing this. It just so happened that my summative journal entry was also my last one. I connect with my friends a lot better and I have more meaningful conversations with family. I always remember that a journey on this earth is never a solo mission. There's always someone in the same boat as me and that's beautiful. And for the brief synopsis, I didn't like how this drawing turned out, but I kind of like the message of it. A man and a giant have a mutual understanding. Sorry. The giant needs to access the cave across the canyon, and the man needs to pass the canyon. And of course, they have what the other person needs. So as week four ended, that's going to... That's going to wrap up the Disciple Project. I hope you enjoyed listening to my stuffy voice attempted to present on iMovie. Uh, I hope that you took something away from this. Maybe you're willing to try it on your own. Who knows? But hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Nora, and today I'll be talking about my Disciple Project. 
Why did I choose this project? I chose to do a moment of silence as my disciple project each day from March 29th to April 29th, 2020. During the uncertain times of the pandemic, a moment of silence will allow me to reflect, grow, and learn as a confirmand. Before the coronavirus crisis, I realized that I spent a great deal of my life rushing so quickly that I missed out on so many things, including chances to adequately connect with God. The only time before the pandemic I had to connect with God was during our weekly Sunday youth group. With my new project, I am allowed a space and time to connect with God on a daily basis. Why journal? As well as completing one moment of silence a day, I have decided to journal about it afterwards. I have kept a journal each day and worked on writing lengthy paragraphs to reflect and summarize each moment. I have reflected on moments of calm, joy, fatigue, and even moments where I feel I did not truly connect with God. Each day was different, but I'm glad I could jot down what I was feeling when I could not find the words to express them out loud. Today, I will be reading aloud two entries from my journal. The first one I will be reading aloud is day 15. This morning, I woke up to rain and a steady thunderstorm. This made me feel a little sad and down. During my moment, I felt a slight disconnect and found it hard to reflect. We are coming up upon our month of being in quarantine, and I felt that today while I was at home and in my moment. I look forward to tomorrow, which is another day. The second entry I'll be reading aloud is day 18. This moment, I felt a great deal better in the moment, as well as afterwards. I am definitely getting better at letting go and what that entails. I think I really just need to turn off my mind from outside worries, concerns, etc., and really focus on my mom moment, which is something I can now do as a result of this disciple project. How did the moments go? As I said previously, I chose to write reflections about my moment immediately after completing it. My moments ranged and were different every day over the past month. Some days, it would be exceedingly easy for me to connect with God. Other days, I had to work hard to keep myself from being distracted by work, schoolwork, my family, and my pets. Did my moments help me grow my connection with God? Yes. If I was asked before I started this project, if I thought it would help me connect with God, I would have been wary. But now, reflecting on my moments and journaling, I can openly state that the disciple project I took part in this spring helped me grow my connection with God, myself, and others beyond what I could have what I could have imagined. I can now look back on the journals, I journal entries I wrote every day and grow from them. Reflection upon this experience. Reflecting upon this month long experience is a bittersweet thing. I am disappointed this project is over, but happy I have learned so many new things about myself. I also learned no matter how confused tired or scared you are god will always help you find a way out even though this process was only one month long i'm confident i will continue it for the next coming months and hopefully years i highly suggest this to anyone who is hoping and becoming a confirmant to take part in a moment of silence as i did and grow from it thank you so much for listening to me discuss my disciple project um i'm casey this was my confirmation project for my eighth grade confirmation. So I chose meditation one day or once a day for 30 days because I wanted to build my relationship with God. And I kind of wanted to stop once in a while and just look around and focus on reflecting. I wanted to spend my free time in a better way. And I really think that thinking is a great way to spend your time. Um, so my process was for one day, four months, or once per day, four months, I would spend five minutes focusing and talking to God about pretty much anything I wanted to. So this could mean like talking about my ups and downs, talking about what could I have done better? What did I do that I thought I did a great job on? What did I do that I thought I didn't do a great job on? Um, 
how can I spend my time better, and how can I get closer to God, improve my habits, and I wanted to play out God's will, and I wanted to do what God wanted me to do, and I wanted to be happier overall. So, the effects, um, so one weekend, I noticed some slight effects. I noticed that I was, or I was focusing on my habits and my ideas on how to get closer with God. I worked on prayer, I worked on decision making, I worked on what I was thankful for, um, but there weren't really that many significant changes. Um, I mean, it was only one weekend, so, I mean, I tried to make it like a habit, not really forced, um, I thought that God's relationship should be a mutual, loving relationship, not one that's forceful and not one that's like homework or like doing something that you don't really want to do. And I wanted to focus more on God's will. So four weeks in, I noticed it wasn't really like just me just talking to myself. I thought that my habits were improved or my habits have improved. I felt happier overall. My time management was better. I felt that reflecting made a huge difference and I thought that it was overall a great experience. So I think that everyone should do it, if you can, which most people can, because it only takes about five minutes out of your day. Um, I think it strengthened my relationship with God for sure, and I think it could re- stre- strengthen anyone's relationship with God. And I thought it was helpful for me for decision-making, um, my personal relationships, and my relationship with God, especially. And I experienced a lot of a. Po- a lot of positive changes, and it was just mo- one month. Um, I'm going to keep doing it, even after just one month, just because of how positive it was and how great, greatly it impacted me. And I think that if anyone can, then anyone should. Thank you. This was my presentation. Um, yeah, have a good day. For my disciple project, I focused on forgiveness. I did this by looking for examples in movies, news stories, and in my daily life. I reflected upon forgiveness by keeping a journal for 30 days. Someone recommended that I watch Shawshank Redemption. I thought it was a great movie, but I couldn't find any themes of forgiveness. After thinking about it for over a week, I realize that this movie lacks forgiveness. The prison system is very unforgiving. Most of the prisoners in this movie are sentenced to life in prison. They quickly lose hope, faith, and a connection with other people. If society cannot forgive these people, how can they forgive themselves? I realize how important it is to forgive yourself. It's sometimes even more important than it is to have others forgive you. You are in control of yourself, and it is up to you to forgive yourself. When I forgive myself, I feel much better about myself. This daily practice highlighted the importance of forgiveness in religions. I read many articles about forgiveness throughout religions and realized how important it is to forgive each other. I saw how hard it can be to forgive people in many situations. This project helped me to appreciate God and his profound message. Forgiveness can be beneficial to both parties. If my mom forgives me for breaking a window, she can move on and I can forgive myself. The daily practice of thinking about forgiveness has helped me recognize that forgiveness can change lives. This project has helped me to appreciate God's love. When I started and picked the topic of forgiveness, I had no idea where the project was going. I knew the definition of forgiveness, but I had never really thought too much about it. Reflecting daily on forgiveness has brought me closer to God and appreciated his willingness to always see the good in us and always forgive. People can choose to forgive others for horrible things. Choosing to forgive people gives others a second chance. It's good to see the good in everyone and to realize the positive impact forgiveness has on people. Self-forgiveness is really important and helps us move on and leave our mistakes behind us. This project helped me forgive myself. I broke my wrist in a skateboard accident it last summer and I was in a cast for six weeks. 
I wasn't able to swim, play hockey, golf, or do any of the things I love to do. I blamed myself for the accident and was beating myself up about it. I blamed myself for being too ambitious on this skateboard and causing myself to miss out on all those fun things. I didn't realize I was holding myself back by holding on to all those negative feelings. Until I started this project and realized how forgiveness impacted me, I was not able to stop blaming myself. Forgiving myself was important. After all, I was just a 12-year-old kid in a skateboard accident last summer. Uh, so for my confirmation project, I did quotes from Jesus. So uh, every day for a month, I read a quote from Jesus. I reflected on the quote I read, and then I picked my top seven quotes for my presentation. My first quote was, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. To me, this means by doing good deeds, you will be treated with the good afterlife. My second quote, I picked, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And to me, this means that we have to follow what God is telling us. Third quote is, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So it's basically saying, By giving mercy, you receive mercy. Fourth quote, as the Father loved me, so have I loved you. So Jesus basically is saying that he always loves us, which is sick. Quote five, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust in, trust also in me. Um, so to me, this meant that we have to trust in Jesus and God, that's pretty much it. For my sixth quote, I picked a new command I give you. Love one another as I loved you, so you must love one another. And so God, or Jesus is basically saying that he's making us love other people the way that he loves us. So there's more love. And for my last quote, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. And so this one was actually my favorite one. And Jesus basically saying that he'll be there whenever we need him. And this is the website I use right here. Thanks. For my discipleship project, I chose to take pictures of where I saw God in nature. While taking these pictures, it made me realize how even though we aren't able to worship in a sanctuary, God's presence is still all around us. Before churches and places of worship were created, God was still in nature. God was, is, and shall be. This realization made me notice God around me in ways I would have never imagined. While being stuck in quarantine and not being able to go to church, this project was a way that I was able to practice my faith just simply by walking outside and seeing the new flowers that bloomed or the leaves that had just fallen off the trees. When doing my project, few Bible verses stood out to me. One of them was Job 12, 7 through 10. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all of these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. These verses describe how all of God's creations represent him in a unique way. 
which was the purpose of my project. I enjoyed taking these pictures of where I saw God in nature and will hopefully can continue to see God in unexpected ways. Hi, my name is Cindy and for my confirmation project, I decided to write a prayer um, every day, sometime during the day. I normally would do it in the mornings, and I felt when I did it in the mornings, um, I just felt calmer throughout the day, or when I did it at nights, I would fall asleep better. Um, and I felt like I connected to God more, which was the goal of this project. So um, I'm glad that um, I connected with him more. Um, and I just wrote um, all the prayers um, in this notebook for the past month. I started on March 29th, and I ended on April 29th. As you can see here, and ended on April 29th, and then I just wrote every other day in between. Um, and I'm just going to read the prayers that I did, the first prayer, and the last, the last prayer that I did. Um, and I felt like there's, like, a big change, and I got, like, better at, um, praying. Um, so the first one I wrote says, I hope, God, I hope that everything is safe, and I pray that we will get back to school as soon as possible. Please let everyone be safe. Amen. And the last one I wrote says, God, thank you for another brand new day with blessings and new beginnings. Amen. I felt like I got a lot better at just, like, um, praying because I didn't really know, like, how to pray or, like, what to say. Like, I know that, like, you can, like, say anything, but I just felt like I got better at it, which I'm happy about. And I think that I will continue to just like try to pray like every morning that I can because I just feel like calmer throughout the day which um made my day go a lot better so I'm really happy about um my confirmation project and that's all bye
Hi, my name is Emma and this is my confirmation project. So for my project, I decided to pray one to two times a day. I normally did this praying in the morning and in the evening. I pray for people in bad situations if I knew them or if I didn't. And I also tried to give thanks to people who were working to help the sick and doing everything they could. So I took some notes after every prayer and I put three things in my notes. I put what I prayed for, how it made me feel, and what is something I should pray for tomorrow. So to the right, I have an example, but it's really blurry, so I'm gonna read it to you. Um, today, I prayed for the nurses and doctors who are taking care of everyone who was sick. This made me feel very grateful for the kind people that are risking getting sick to help others. Tomorrow, I could pray for the families that are going through so much if they, one of their relatives is sick. So some thoughts I had um, after my prayers is praying every day made me see how lucky I am to be healthy. It's something that a lot of people take for granted and I especially take for granted. But now that I see how many people are sick right now, it, it just makes me feel and see how lucky I, I am. It also made me, um, made me see how many people are going through this tough situation um, and how many people need help. So praying for them, they just get a few extra prayers a day and it could really help them. So um, some questions that you may be asking is, um, am I going to continue the practice and continue my um, praying every day? To that question, I answer yes. Um, after the project I decided that I should start praying every day, even if it's just at dinner, I should still keep on praying. Another question you might have is, how did this impact me? And it kind of showed me that even though we're not in church right now, we can still practice our religious um, beliefs and practices. So we can still keep on praying and do everything we might do in church, but just at home. So... That's kind of what I took out from our project. Thank you for watching. A month is born in gratitude by Matthew. The first thing I'm thankful for is our beautiful house and front yard. The next, our beautiful and supportive neighborhood with lots of friends. My mom's garden, which lightens up our beautiful backyard and my lawn care business, which helps people keep their lawns looking nice all summer long. My equipment, so I don't have to cut the grass with scissors and blow my sister and my dog. We're a great team. And my dog, Stevie, who was five months old yesterday, great addition to our family. She's very cute and brings us all light in the morning. Next, our pool, which we go to in the summer. We're a member of Stony Lane. The beach, which we, me and my sister loves baking things in the sand. And riding bikes with my sister at the beach and at home. We also like to surf together at Ocean City. Here's another picture. Another thing I'm grateful for is going to amusement parks with me and my sister and driving bumper cars. I always make her go on roller coasters if she doesn't want to go on. Every time I used to come home from school, she'd be baking crazy stuff. Like cinnamon rolls, my favorite. One of my favorite things that I use every day is my one wheel. It's an amazing transportation device, which I ride everywhere and love so much. Finally is my electric bike, which I love to go farther than my one wheel. It has opened so many new friendships and things as I go. While we look at the cross shape of the church building that I took with my drone, I can explain how completing this confirmation project has made me aware of all the things in my life every day that I'm grateful for.
Confirmation has reminded me to live with a grateful heart. Hi, I'm Holden and I gave up single-use plastic for 30 days because it's wrecking our environment. I define single-use plastic as water bottles, plastic cups, or any type of plastic you would throw away or not put in the dishwasher. This challenge was made easier because of quarantine, but it was still hard. Plastic is around us in almost everything we own. Look around you, and I guarantee there will be at least three plastic things in your room. If every, according to the University of Utah, Americans represent 5% of the world's population, but throw away 30% of the world's trash. If every country did that, we'd be neck deep in plastic. The practice I chose was self-control, because that's what I thought I needed to help me get through this journey. A Bible verse that helped me get through this challenging time was Matthew 6, 16 to 18. It states that, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. This means you shouldn't over-exaggerate what you're doing just for the attention, and do it for how it makes you feel and know you're making the world a better place. For me, each day was difficult with all the temptations to grab a water bottle from the fridge before working out compared to just filling up a water bottle. There were a few days where I drank out of a single-use plastic water bottle and reflected on it afterward and asked God for the strength to help me. I felt like a disciple when I educated my family on this topic so we can use less plastic and keep God's kingdom safe. I'm also looking to God to give me guidance in other areas of my life. With everything going on in the world right now, I pray that people would let God into their life, lives more and know that we are not alone. This may help people feel less anxious and know he is with us to get through this terrible time. Now that I'm not playing sports, I have more time to connect with God and reflect on my choices and wanting to help this beautiful place God created for us. I'm Manuel Prince, and for my Disciple Project, I decided to journal things every day that I'm grateful for. I chose this idea because while it's always good to be self-aware and understand your blessings all the time, especially during these current times with the pandemic, I thought it'd be nice to take time and reflect. This was also because there are plenty of things that we're not currently able to do, such as like hang out with friends or just be out and about. So it was a good opportunity for me because I felt more aware of the things that I'm missing out on or things that I'm grateful for, especially because I'm not currently able to do most of them. However, it also ha has also made me more appreciative of the things that are helping me get through this quarantine and the people such as first responders that are helping others. Okay, so I'm just gonna read some of my entries. I just picked out a few that I thought would be nice to share and like give a general description or summary of my entire project. So this one's from April 1st, and it says, After being in quarantine for a while, I surprisingly miss real school. Online school is more complicated and confusing. I'm grateful for school and the ability to learn interactively. And that one, this was just around the time when we were really getting into online learning, and it was becoming more like established. And um, it really just made me miss real school because it's much harder to try to learn online. And even though I might not like school all the time or waking up early, it really made me grateful to be able to go to school and learn interactively, which I know that not everyone has a chance to do. And then this one is from April 4th, and it says, Constantly being around family has been tough and has made me realize how much I miss my friends. I was spoiled seeing them practically every day, but now that I cannot, I realize how grateful I am for them and their company. 
and that one I obviously I haven't been able to see my friends as much and even though I saw them every single day at school being without them now has really made me appreciate them and everything that they do for me this one is from April 11th and it says, I'm grateful for a safe home. During this pandemic, many are forced to stay in abusive households and I'm so grateful that I'm able to quarantine in a safe place. And because of this quarantine, a lot of people, well, everyone has to stay at home and those who are in like not safe areas or in un, like abusive households have trouble going through this because they're forced to be around those people all the time and that can be really difficult for others and not necessarily very safe. And then this one is from April 19th and it says, these uncertain times have made me worried. No one knows what, for sure what the future holds or if things will ever return to normal. Because of this, I'm grateful for certainty. Um, throughout every day before this pandemic, pretty much everyone knew what was gonna happen. No one was like scared that they were never gonna be able to do something again or hang out with people. But now during this pandemic, everyone's kind of worried. No one really knows how it's gonna play out or when things will return or if things will ever return to that way they were. And that really just made me appreciate and be grateful for that certainty that we all had before this. Thank you for listening to my project. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, throughout these 30 days, I've become way more appreciative and grateful for the smaller things that most people overlook on a daily basis. And this experience has brought me closer to God because while this pandemic is still very prevalent, it has shown me all the good he has done for us and how he continues to take care of us even through difficult times. And this has given me a deeper faith and I'm much more grateful for him and everything he does. Hello, my name is Harrison and this is my confirmation project. My confirmation project, I did a daily 31 day devotional for the month of March. Basically, you read the devotional, you read two, three Bible verses, and then you comment on what the theme was of those three pieces. I chose this idea for my project because reading the Bible was never really something that I really liked to do. When I was younger, the words were hard to understand sometimes and it can get pretty boring. But now I'm older, I can see the meaning and the lessons behind it and how they affect us still today. This, can, this project connected me to God by Reading the Bible really helps you understand how God helps us through right now and through for forever because he'll always be helping us, he'll always be loving us. And the Bible can sometimes make God feel like some distant, far away because he's, it was such a long time ago where the Bible was like written, but he still helps us to this day. Five potential results for that for this project would be I now read the Bible a lot more which is always good uh, reading the Bible and listening to God really gave me stability during this time I have now grown closer to God by reading the devotions in the Bible every day I have now become more dependent on God for strength and stability and I am now aware of how God influences us even now This project broke me out of my comfort zone because, like I said before, reading the Bible was never my thing and I never really understood it. It was long, it was boring when I was younger, but now I really understand the hidden meanings behind it. And it was really cool to read the Bible and understand what God really is telling us through the Bible. This, engaging in this project really helped me, my faith, Develop because we may read the Bible more, which is always a good thing because that's like step one. You got to know the Bible. It made me understand how God helps us even now, even for, forever, and it makes me understand how God like is in our daily lives. And it might not seem like it, but His plans are always one to always end up very good. That was my confirmation project, and my name is Harrison Kirk. Hi everybody, I'm Annabelle. For my 8th grade disciple project, I decided to do 30 days of gratitude. For this presentation, I'll read over two of my journal entries and review the other slides. The first day, Friday 327, I was grateful for technology. Today, I'm grateful for technology. I had a full day of online school and none of this could have been done without the help of technology. 
Day two, Saturday, 328, I was grateful for food. Today I'm grateful for food. I was able to make my family a delicious dinner in order to nourish our bodies, especially with everything going on the past few weeks and food is limited in grocery stores. I was really grateful to still have food in our home. Sunday, 329, I was grateful for my family. The next day on Monday, 3.30, I was grateful for outside and just being outside in general. Grateful for my dog. Grateful for my brother. Grateful to have access to medicine. Grateful for my school. my friends, grateful for cars, time, my phone, my house, Delivery workers. Grocery stores. Nice weather and long walks. My neighborhood. My TV. My kitchen. A fresh start every day. The vacation I took to Greece last summer. My older sister. My dad. And my mom. Her. And at accessibility. Good health. A hot shower. Traditions. Weekends. Laughter. Clothes. And grateful for the opportunity to do this gratitude project. After these 30 days, I appreciated some of the little things I may not have appreciated otherwise, and it was a really eye-opening experience to point out the things I was grateful for. I also want to thank my mentor, Susie Valerio, for her help. If you had the opportunity, I would do this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ellis, and I'm going to be presenting my confirmation project today. For my project, I did a month of reading and analyzing Bible passages each day. I read passages about pandemic, hope, childhood, prayer, and connection with God. Every day throughout my project, I began to enjoy reading the quotes more and more because it gave me the quiet time to look deeper into the Bible and maybe even verses I'd read before but never really thought about. To find more Bible passages, I used online Bible sites, recommended verses, and read through some pages of the Bible until I found a verse that stuck out to me. After reading a verse each day, I would journal on how the quote made me feel. The next day, I would look back at the same quote and see how it might have changed my mindset just in that one day. I continued this for 31 days. I found many quotes, some which I did not easily relate to, and some that I could compare myself to, and use the message in my life. In the 31 passages that I read, three of them stuck out with me, and I would like to share them with you today. 
In Jeremiah 12:11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I really like this quote because I believe that it can be connected to the pandemic that we as a world are going through right now for a little revolving around COVID-19. During these tough times, we need to realize that God has a plan for us, and he knows that we can get through this and see the light on the other side. This passage gave me hope that soon our lives will start to become the same again, and this will pass. The second passage that I would like to share with you today is from Jeremiah 12, 29, 12. It goes, Then you will call on me, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Through this quote, I was reminded that God is always with you, and he does not long for you to talk to him, but he is always there if you need to speak, and he will always listen and appreciate you. The last quote that I would like to share with you today is from James 5.13. In this section, God says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. This verse is very much like the previous, portraying that God is always there, but it also shows a bigger message. It shows that not only is he available in times of prayer, but he is available in the happy times to celebrate and have fun. And he is there with you in the sad times when you are grieving and he can cheer you up. It also shows that prayer is for both good and bad times, and you can pray whenever you would like. In conclusion, through reading these Bible passages and thinking more into the text, I learned that I can so easily connect to the Bible, which was written a very long time ago, and I can apply the lessons of the Bible in my daily life with very little effort at all. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alex, and my disciple project was about my star word, which was humor. Overall, I did 30 days of how I found humor every day, and I just did some quick sentences every day. So I just have a few of these papers with all 30 days. The first day I found humor while playing with my new dog, Rocky. The second day, I found humor while talking to my friends on video games. On the third day, I found humor while talking to my family at the dinner table about some daily life. The next day, on the fourth day, I found humor while talking to my younger brother, Nikki. On the fifth day, I found humor while playing video games with my friends. On the sixth day, I found joy while playing lacrosse with my little brother, Nikki, and my older brother, Brooks. On the seventh day, I found humor while having family dinner. On the eighth day, I found humor while talking to my friends on online classes and getting the catch up. On the ninth day, I found humor while jumping on the trampoline with my siblings and doing fun tricks. On the 10th day, I found humor while playing with my dogs outside on a walk. On the 11th day, I found humor while watching a, fam a funny YouTube video. On the 12th day, I found humor while swimming in the pool with my brothers. On the 13th day, I found humor while watching a funny movie. The 14th day, I found humor while texting with my friend. On the 15th day, I found humor while watching a YouTube video. On the 16th day, I found humor while playing video games with my friends and just getting to talk about funny things. On the 17th day, I found humor at a family dinner. On the 18th day, I found humor while playing sports with my brothers. On the 19th day, I found humor while FaceTiming my friend. On the 20th day, I found humor while playing lacrosse with my brother. On the 21st day, I found humor while spending family time. On the 22nd day, I found humor while watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, a really funny show I recommend. On the 23rd day, I found humor while watching YouTube. On the 24th day, I found humor while talking to my older brother, Brooks. On the 25th day, I found humor while talking to my two friends and playing video games. On the 26th day, I found humor while talking to my friends on FaceTime. On the 27th day, I found humor while playing with my dogs. <coughs> on the 28th, I found humor while watching YouTube. On the 29th day, 
I found humor while talking to my older brother Brooks. On the 30th day, the final day, I found humor from watching a really funny show, which was Curb Your Enthusiasm. Overall, throughout this period of time, I found ways to find humor and just draw myself up. And I've seen how much I actually laugh in everyday life. Thank you.